This is a jar of giant clam meat, grown by this man. His name's Martin. And as odd as it is to say, he's one of the world's preeminent clam farmers. Martin, what's the scientific name of this clam? But this is Hypopus Hypopus. <laughs> you see? The man knows his stuff. As well he should. He's been working with clams for over 20 years. Although for everything he knows about this special little creature, I gotta say, Martin, you're not the world's best marketer. I'm sorry. But that's where you come in. Because if you can find us a restaurant that will serve this as the delicacy that it is, you could, without exaggeration, personally save the most important animal in the history of the Pacific from extinction. This guy. Chances are you've heard of the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. But have you ever heard of the Clam Age? I certainly hadn't, and now it's all I can think about. Because in the atolls of the Marshall Islands, there was no iron, there was no bronze, there was no stone, and yet they ended up building a relatively complex, thousands of years long running society with nothing more than what they could derive from the shells of a clam. It was virtually the entire toolkit of the ancient Micronesian. It was without any doubt the most important animal in the history of the Pacific. Without this giant clam, our species wouldn't have been able to populate their way across this ocean. These far-flung atolls would have almost certainly been a death trap. And that's a lot riding on one clam. Especially a clam that today virtually nobody cares about. It wasn't just about being a form of food that couldn't run away from you. It's not just that for a reef to remain healthy, it requires healthy clams. From this shell, they built fish hooks and axes, adzes and scrapers, dishes and jewelry. But most importantly, from this part, the base where the clam is the thickest, they built something called a pounder. And although it might not seem all that impressive to those of us with power tools, it was truly the most important thing a Micronesian could own especially for the women who did a vast majority of their society's work and therefore needed most of the tools. It's hard to imagine that without them, they wouldn't have all just died. But I can already hear you in my head asking, okay, but what's a pounder? What does that do? Why is that important? And I suppose the answer is pretty simple. It pounds, naturally, but because of that, it kind of does everything. Because on the coasts of these islands, grows a tree called the pandanus. A tree so important that for the sake of this story, it might as well be considered, I don't know, the giant clam of the land. Because the fruit that it grows, although not particularly delicious, when flattened by that pounder can last for months. Slam that clam enough and all the juice drips out. Which is not a euphemism, I'm talking about fruit jerky. And in turn, that makes this the perfect food for a week's long voyage across an ocean. But even more importantly than that, the leaves of this same tree, when cut and pounded by that same pounder, can be turned into a form of cloth that produces not only the regional clothing, but also their sails. Sails that brought their people across seemingly impossible distances at a time when the rest of the world's ships could barely hug a coastline. Sails that brought people to Micronesia over 3,500 years ago. It is one incredibly cool animal, this clam. Which is why it pains me so much to tell you that for the most part, in the islands that it was fundamental in populating, it's functionally extinct. Which is certainly the case here in Kashrei Island, one of Micronesia's tall islands. Unlike those atolls, tall islands are absolutely covered in stone, and yet, even with those potential pounders of greater weight and power, it didn't stop them from revering this clam. It was so important to Kashreans, it even became one of their gods. Deep in the jungle here, there's a 1,200-year-old temple complex that only in the last few years has been shown to likely be dedicated to this very clam. A meal so important that they ate every single one. Which brings me back to Martin. If there's anyone on this planet who's going to return these creatures back to their place in the ecosystem, it's probably going to be Martin. Even if he's doing it somewhat by accident. Because when Martin Zelsch moved to Kashre Island, he wasn't thinking about ecology. If anything, it was quite the opposite. You see, Martin was in the business of selling live animals, aquarium animals, a man who collected tropical fish, coral, and clams, and then sold them to the people in the places that fish, coral, and clams would, if you can pardon the pun, feel a little out of water. And in the exotic animal industry, as odd as it might sound, the giant clam tends to be less valuable living than dead, or 
at least there's a much larger market for it. Because a massive aquarium is really hard to maintain, especially one that can sustain such a rare and long-living creature, but dead? Well, what's cooler in your Florida condo than throwing your keys into a giant shell in the foyer? Really brings that tropical vibe to the home. Just as long as you never contemplate that you're the exact person driving that animal to extinction. But sitting in his sales office back in Germany, Martin was not too concerned about the survival of the giant clam, just as I suspect you weren't before you clicked on this video. Like everybody, he was far more concerned with his own little world, with sustaining his business. And what he was finding was that every single year it was getting harder and harder to source these animals. And in his heart, he knew it wasn't because the animals were becoming less, it just seemed like the will wasn't there. After all, these were being farmed, not pulled out of the ocean, so there shouldn't have been a problem there. And so, frustrated with what he saw as a threat to his business, he decided, well, I'm just going to go and see what the issue is. When he got here, what he found was that the aquarium business is far more complicated than just scooping up little fish and mailing them off to Deutschland. Living in Kashrei Island, shipping from Kashrei Island, is complicated. Although everyone I've met here was lovely to the person and by no means unintelligent, the hard reality is that because the education system here has been so bad for so long, it simply isn't a place you can just hire local workers and then expect them to have the plethora of unique skills it takes to manage something so complicated as this farm. Which, in a way, was lucky for Martin. Because as soon as he landed, whether he knew it or not, in the eyes of the local government, he had become the prime candidate to take this over. Not because he was a professional clam farmer from Germany, just because he happened to be here at all. He seemed to know what he was talking about. He could do the math. He could write emails. He could engage with those foreign consumers on their level. And most of all, he seemed to care. This was his business. So whether Martin was the right man for the job or not, he got the job. He didn't even really want it necessarily, but who else was going to do it? And over time, he became the right man for the job. He forced himself to be. Within a few years, this farm, which was virtually dead in the water when he arrived, became one of the most prolific producers of clam in the world. Not just one variety, but six. If you've got a beautiful little guy brightening your aquarium today, there's an extremely good chance it came from him. He has donated tens, if not hundreds of thousands of clams to nearby islands, to farms, and what's more, because he keeps his water ever so slightly higher than that of the ocean, his clams are a little bit more resilient to climate change. They're actually doing better out in the wild than the natural ones are. Although there aren't really that many natural ones left. But that said, it isn't like he's some eco-warrior on some battle against extinction. He's just a businessman. And this is just his business. It's just that the natural consequence of Martin being himself is that he's saving the world. Well, a tiny little piece of it. Because as luck would have it, his farm is actually quite small. More of an incubator, really. And the ocean is huge. The reefs that surround this island are huge. And once these clams have started populating on this farm, they can be placed back into cages and begin spreading out all on their own. Clams that were so over-harvested that they basically no longer existed here are now being returned to the reef as a natural consequence of what Martin is just doing for his business. Business that had he stayed in Germany would almost certainly still be stripping this reef. And what's more, it isn't just changing the ecology, it's changing Martin. Even in this tiny place, with almost no attention except the handful of individuals who happen to knock on his door, he's starting to realize that his legacy affects more than just his bank statements. Accident or not, he's genuinely changing the world. A few weeks before we arrived, Martin was in Hawaii having American News sing his praises. Their state aquarium's nearly 30-year-old giant clam had died, and he just so happened to be the only man who could replace it without robbing the wild because a few years back he'd brought some over as a breeding stock from one of the last remaining natural habitats in Palau, again as part of his business. He began breeding them on his farm as part of his business, and in turn he brought them back to the Kajrayan Reef where they had been extinct for as long as anybody could remember. Not because he's some hero, but because he's a businessman. He knew that if he could farm them, he'd be virtually the only man on earth who could, who did. And now when Hawaii was in need, it was Martin who was there to help. 
So today, Martin is expanding his business into coral. It's still early stages at this point, little more than harvesting the ocean to break them apart and grow new stock from splinters, but that's how it always begins for him. He's already had enough success that it seems clear to me that he's going to do great things there too. Even with virtually no access to mainland materials, no access to scientists, not even a local community who truly understands why it should happen at all, he's still finding ways to do more. Because this is his farm, his island, his world, and his niche. But business will always be business. And if you want to save something, you still have to fund it somehow. So the way that Martin sees it, he's going to fund it with meat. If he wants to save the one giant clam, he's going to do so by selling the meat of a different giant clam. It's less rare, easier to grow, and most importantly, it tastes great which is probably why they built all those temples to it. It's just a giant clam doesn't grow cheap. They take years to reach maturity. For international food standards, you need a very specific setup that's virtually impossible to maintain here, which means a small jar of giant clam wholesales for about $25, and it's probably gonna end up as 50 in retail. And you'd be hard pressed to find anybody who's willing to add that to their weekly grocery bill. Which is why, if you can recall at the start of this episode, I've redirected his efforts towards something that I think has a far better chance of survival. What he really needs is a champion. A restaurant, probably. Someone that can provide their customers with the knowledge that by eating there, by consuming this food, they're helping to rewild an extinct species. Which is where you come in. He and I can't possibly know every restaurant on Earth, and even if we did, how would we contact them? Really, many hands make light work, and perhaps you can help. Perhaps you know someone whose customers want to eat one of the rarest meats on Earth, something you can only get here. Maybe they want to try one of the most important animals to ever exist in the Pacific. And in turn, maybe you can help him save the world. Well, at least a tiny bit of it. This is. Actually, Martin, why don't you say that part? I think you've earned it. Thank you, and this is rare earth. Perfect. Kata won't let me finish this episode until I say the words, happy as a clam. So how are you feeling, Kata? Let me turn the camera. You happy? You happy as a clam? Hmm?